Ancestors. Henry Wyatt came here. It was about the year that Columbus discovered America. Uh, Henry Wyatt was a supporter of Henry Tudor against Richard III. Henry Wyatt was kept captive in the Tower, we believe the Tower of London, and he was tortured by um, Richard III and said, would you swap your allegiance from Henry Tudor to me? And he said, no, I've given it to him first, and that's it. So he was tortured and kept there, but when Richard III got defeated, uh, Henry Tudor became Henry VII, and he gave Henry Wyatt all Allington and all the lands around Ellsford. He was a very, very rich man. So he came here. When he came here, he did great additions to the castles. He was the first man to do central heating. He put in a fireplace, fireplace there, and a fireplace there, and he sat in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> good, that's what happened. That went down well, well, good. Yeah. Um, and also, um, you're walking in the footsteps of history because Henry the Seventh, Henry the Eighth, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Parr, Gardner Walsley, and Thomas Cromwell have all walked in this hall where you are today. Right? Now, Henry, um, Henry the Eighth was a visitor here. Right? And when he came uh, here, he always brought two builders with him because he was worried about being assassinated. Right? Because in his time, he had about 75,000 people executed. So a lot of people didn't like him. So over here, the door at the end, the other side is that one room is called priest, and then you've got a staircase that goes up to the royal room. Now when Henry went to bed at night, they tried to wall that door in so no one could get through. And in the morning he banged on the other side, they took it all down and let him out again because he was worried about outside of London being assassinated. Now when uh, Henry VIII met Anne Boleyn, Anne Boleyn lived at Heber and she was reputed lover of Thomas Wyatt, Henry Wyatt's son. So Henry VIII found out, came here, said to Thomas Wyatt, she's mine. And he went, yeah, well, I want to keep your head, that's fine. <laughs> but just Henry, just to make sure, sent Thomas on a long mission for about two or three years, so hopefully he would forget her. Right? She did. Um, when Cardinal Henry VIII wanted to divorce Catherine of Aragon and marry Anne Boleyn, Cardinal Wolsey, who was the big cheese then, he was the guy running the country, because Henry VIII just went off jousting and different things, said, oh, well, there's a meeting in France, on it, over, tell the Cardinals you want to get rid of her, and that'd be fine. So it's in 1527, that unfortunately for Cardinal Wolsey, that they met here in the Great Hall, that's Henry VIII, through that door was priest, that's where Cardinal Wolsey stayed, and Henry VIII stayed upstairs, and he had the task of telling Henry that he couldn't divorce. Uh, Catherine of Aragon. So that was Cardinal Wolsey's downfall, because after that he was sent up to become Archbishop of York, and then Henry decided to bring him back to chop his head off, but fortunately for him, he died on the way back. So he was just dead. <laughs> and then Thomas Cromwell became the next big cheese. So he was a uh, of the country. So um, Thomas uh, Wyatt, the elder, he was actually in um, the Tower of London because he got into a fight. And he was locked in, and he actually saw Anne Boleyn's head taken off by the executioner. Thomas Wyatt's sister Margaret was the, uh, Anne Boleyn's lady in waiting, and she was, had the task of picking her head up and putting it into a basket. Oh. Yeah, it very now, just quickly say, Thomas Wyatt's sister Margaret married a guy called Sir Anthony Lee, and they had nine children, and some of the siblings went off to Virginia in America. And Margaret Wyatt is the great 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 grandmother of Robert E. Lee, who led the American uh, Confederacy in the War of Independence, uh, the American Civil War, sorry. So um, it all happens from Allerton Castle. And then you come along. That's right. Okay, so then there was Thomas Wyatt the Younger. Now Thomas Wyatt the Younger led a rebellion from here in 1554 to overthrow Queen Mary because Queen Mary was going to marry Philip of Spain and turn the castle back to being Catholics. So the country didn't want that. And he held a meeting here 
in one of his fireplaces. And he had all the uh, barons and that from Somerset, from York and all that. They all come down and said, yeah, we're we'll, we'll march on London. We'll overthrow Queen Mary. We won't kill her. We'll just chuck her off the throne and put Elizabeth, this is Elizabeth as she was there, on the throne. So in February 1554, they all left here to march on London. He got to what is now Green Park, waited for three days for the reinforcements to come from York and up from Somerset, and no one turned up. Queen Mary, hearing this, sent a proclamation, anybody who leaves now can go away a free person. If you stay and you lose, you can get your head chopped off. <clears throat> so he lost a lot of his supporters, but he still carried on, he still thought we could do it. They blocked off London Bridge, which was the only bridge at the time, so he had to go down to Kingston and ford the river at low tide. And uh, he marched in, but got captured in Fleet Street, um, and he was taken to the Tower of London. Now, before he left here, he sent Princess Elizabeth, as she was, a message to say that's what they were going to do. They were going to overthrow Queen Mary and put her on the throne. The letter was intercepted, they knew he was coming. Princess Elizabeth was arrested, put in a boat, and taken to the Tower of London. She turned to the constable and said, I'm not a traitor, I don't know anything about this. Please don't take me through traitor's gate. So he took her in another way, fortunately. Under torture, when he's getting racked and all that, he said Princess Elizabeth had something to do with the plot. But on his, well, just before he had his head chopped off, they said he rambled on for about three quarters of an hour, as you would if someone's going to chop your head off. <coughs> and he said she had nothing to do with the plot. So she was then put under house arrest, and she was under house arrest for about another two and a half years till Mary died, and then she became Queen Elizabeth. Had he stuck to his story, then history as we know it would have been different. All the family had to move out of here. Um, all the lands were confiscated. But in 1581, Queen Elizabeth made um, Thomas White's son, George, a knight, and gave him Boxley Manor, which is not far from here, but he did in Allerton Castle. He had a son called Francis. Francis went to Virginia in America in 1621. And with him, he took the laws of the Magna Carta, which King John and the Barons made King John sign it, uh, seal sorry, in 1215. He took the copies of the Magna Carta to America, and some of those uh, laws of the Magna Carta are in the American Constitution today, right? and also in other countries. Just jumping forward a little bit, Sir Robert, the present owner, came to England in 1996, he's an American, and he started Maury Pole, the Market Opinion Research International in London. Um, and he's become a self-made millionaire. And what he did at the time was he, got to, he made 2,000 phone calls and asked people what they spent on food. Because Sainsbury's, said it was in the internet then, and Sainsbury's, Tesco's, and all those wanted to know what you bought for the weekend. So 